Katrina Walsh was feeling exceptionally well. She had a wonderful husband, Chance, who was now staying home with their three wonderful children. Her job was satisfying, and although she had misrepresented it to Chance, she was being promoted. Life was good by any standard, and most people envied her in Chance's perfect life. Trina, however, was not happy. She had a sheltered upbringing and had married her first boyfriend. Not that she regretted it, but she felt like she was missing something, and the feeling gnawed at her like a thorn in her flesh. Her best friend Amber told her many stories about her dating adventures, and it only made Trina jealous because things were pretty vanilla in the bedroom with Chance. Amber had advised her to talk to Chance about it, but Trina didn't want to. She wanted to, but she just couldn't bring herself to talk about things with Chance. Trina was even sure that Chance would like to diversify his life in the bedroom, he sometimes hinted at it. Still, Trina decided it was best to try it with someone else, and then she would be satisfied. Trina had the perfect plan. Her plan was fail-safe. She had a work conference two and a half hours away by car. There would be a meeting on Friday and the conference on Saturday. After that, she planned to return home. She told Chance that she had to go to the conference because of an upcoming promotion, but she left out a few details. First, the promotion was already in her pocket, and she really didn't need to go to the conference. Second, when she left work on Friday, she was going to drive one hour to a small town on the way to the conference to meet up with a guy she met online. She would have dinner and then drive back to his room in a small hotel next to the restaurant. After figuring out what she was missing, she would head to the conference. Trina, I can't believe this is really going to happen. I'm really going to find out what it's like to have another man. I'll also get to try all the things I've heard about but haven't done. I know Chance will probably agree to them, but I don't want him to think I'm or anything. It's better this way. I'll try them with Roger, and then if I like it, I'll work on it with Chance. He's such a great guy, I can't get over how lucky I am to be married to him. I wouldn't want to be so unhappy, but these stories Amber is spinning, and my romance novels are just tying me in knots I have to find out what the other guy is like. I have to try something new. It's only going to be once. I've had enough of 10 years of marriage, just once. Of course, what chance doesn't know can't hurt him. There's the restaurant. I wish I had put a rose in my hair. I told Roger, I wonder what his real name is, that I would wear a rose in my hair because my name is Rose so he could recognize me. One last look in the mirror, and I think I look good for a mom of three. Business casual dress with an extra button undone on the blouse, tight pants to show off my best but, a little makeup touch up, and I'm out. It's a nice little place. The sign says, sit by yourself, and I go find as private a table as possible for me and Roger. Trina, it's so good to see you. What a coincidence we both stopped at the same place to have dinner while traveling. Please join us. Wow, that's my mother-in-law, Susan, always so exuberant. What are my in-laws doing here? I should stop and sit with them, but it's no good. What if Roger shows up before I can get away from them? Trina, you look so good. That rose really suits you, my mother-in-law is always so sweet. It looks like you're going on a date, not a work conference, my father-in-law frowned seriously. I've never seen him frown like that. He's such a teddy bear, always smiling and letting the kids climb all over him. I better not be wearing those tiny thongs because he seriously scares me with that look, and they won't hold up if I'm my pants. So I sat down, pulled the rose out of my hair, and put it on the table. Then I asked my in-laws what they were doing. Oh, Chance told us you had to go to a work conference, and we decided to surprise him with a visit since three kids under seven is too much to look after alone on the weekend. My mother-in-law is so sweet and definitely loves her son Chance. She loves her other four children as well, but Chance seems to be the favorite. We'll probably help him a lot more in the future. My father-in-law's frown grew even deeper, and my bladder nearly burst. Then my father-in-law's frown turned into what I can only call righteous fury. I prayed that Roger had set me up, and his arrival wouldn't cause my father-in-law to be so incandescent. A few moments later, to my eternal shame, I heard the words, Are you Rose M? 
Standing in front of me was a very pleasant-looking man about my age. He must have seen a rose on the table, and since no one else in the restaurant wore roses, he assumed I was her. I replied, no, I am Trina, and wished him luck in finding Rose. Things got awkward at our table, and things didn't get any better when my phone rang, letting me know I had a text message. I quickly disconnected my phone. If it was possible, my father-in-law's demeanor became even more somber, as storm clouds formed over our table in the restaurant. My mind was spinning with thoughts that things were not going as planned, that this was really turning into a disaster. Just then, I heard Susan's voice. Trina, do you know how Chance got his name? Probably not, because it's a family secret, my father-in-law muttered loud enough for me to hear. Susan continued, so, I made a huge mistake. When your father-in-law Sydney and I were married for about 11 years, I had everything going great, a wonderful husband, for wonderful children, and a good job. And yet, I had a nagging feeling that I was missing something in my life. You see, my parents were very strict, and I had a sheltered upbringing. Then I met Sid, we fell in love, got married, and then the what-if thoughts started to hit me. I knew at the time that I should banish these thoughts from my head, that they would only lead to trouble, but to my eternal regret, I didn't. Eventually, I started flirting with a guy named Bevan, who worked in another branch of the company we worked for. It all happened over the phone, there was no internet back then. I didn't even know what he looked like. I thought it was harmless, the office was five hours away, and I would never meet him. It made me feel sexy and desirable to someone other than Sid, and for about a year, that was enough for me to stay happy. Then I found out that they were going to send me to a company conference, and Bevan would be attending as well. Things escalated from there, and as you can imagine, it spiraled on its own. It's a bit awkward, the whole story, really, but this part especially. You see, Sid and I were, you might say, very conservative in the bedroom. Sid tried to get me to try new things, but I just couldn't get past my upbringing, no matter how much I wanted to. Sometimes Bevan would casually get on the phone and talk about things that Sid and I had never done. It really turned me on, and of course, I couldn't do anything about it. I had never initiated anything with Sid that wasn't proper, so I was very frustrated. When it came time to go to the conference, Bevan started suggesting that we get together and discuss things together. You mean sex, my husband growled under his breath, but we all heard. So, at Bevan's suggestion, I bought lingerie, which was a first for me. My plan was foolproof. The only possible problem was that Alice Higgins from my office was also going to the conference. She was a gossip and a... I wasn't too worried because I was sure she'd meet someone, and when she left with them, I could sneak out with Bevan. Sid and the kids dropped me off at the bus station and kissed me goodbye. I was so ecstatic that I didn't even think about the consequences if my beloved husband found out. My seat on the bus was next to an elderly woman. I thought I would have time to relax on the bus, but I was too excited, and the woman was so interesting that we had a nice conversation. We talked about all sorts of things, and eventually, I asked her if she was married. The answer was a revelation to me. She was married to a wonderful man, she had three beautiful children, but she had an itch she couldn't explain. She had the perfect life, but she felt like she was missing something, so she was incredibly cautious and found another guy to relieve that itch. And then her happy world came crashing down. Her husband found out about her transgression, and being of a different time, divorced her and got everything. She was rejected by all her friends and relatives. Her children soon had a new mom, and she was left penniless and depressed. It was a long way back. She was traveling on a bus to visit one of her children and grandchildren. After years of trying, her daughter finally agreed to meet with her. Her other children still refused. Point forty long, horrible years had passed, and she had finally healed from the huge wound she had inflicted on herself. I was at a loss for words. It seemed this woman had been put on the bus to knock some sense into me. If I had any doubts, what she said next was truly an epiphany. She said, I seem too excited to just drive to a work conference, there must be more to it. And from what she had heard me say, I have a great family, but there was one problem. She knew I was going to cheat on my husband at this conference. 
and without accusing me, she gave me advice. She said that instead of what I had planned to do at the conference, I should call my husband as soon as work activities were over. I should make sure I call him as soon as the kids go to bed. When I call him, I should be wearing the outfit I bought for the conference. How did she know about the outfit? Then, I have to have phone sex with my husband. I have to be as descriptive and enthusiastic as possible. Sid was shocked by my call, and I was so turned on by the description of my lingerie and what we should do when I got home that I did something I'd never done before. She had to take matters into her own hands, she means, I already had everything in my hands at that point. I couldn't believe my husband had said that, but given what I was saying, it was no surprise. That night was the beginning of a new phase in our marriage. When he picked me up from the bus, Sid was alone. He had arranged for a babysitter and drove me to a nearby motel. We did it for three hours, and although some of his stuff went where I could never get pregnant, I did get pregnant. Chance wasn't conceived until that day or a week after the influx of his stuff. At that point, it seemed like Trina was going to abort me, but I told her I wasn't done yet. However, my stupidity had consequences. Six months later, at a Christmas party at work, my stupidity caught up with me. I was talking to my work friends, and they were admiring my pot belly when I noticed Alice Higgins talking to my husband. I thought nothing of it, but then I saw Sid's face darken, and I felt horrified. As I rushed over to them, Sid was just thanking her as I approached, and the clouds were already gathering over my head. I asked, really begged, him to come outside with me because I needed some air. Luckily, he came with me. Lucky she was pregnant, otherwise, things would have gone very differently. My husband had the same fuzzy look on his face as he did then. I almost peed my pants, both then and now. Somehow, I managed to get the story to him through the tears and sobs. Somehow, I convinced Sid not to divorce me. That phone call on Friday night, and then Saturday night, is what saved me. He learned from Alice that I had given up on Bevan and was spending all my free time in my room. Alice also thankfully told Sid that she had stepped in and slept with him on Saturday. Bevan told her the whole story of my relationship with him out of revenge. I never went back to work for them, and we eventually moved to where we live now. Just say that I took a chance that she wouldn't do anything like that again. And I'll admit, although I still get angry sometimes, she never once gave me a reason to question the wisdom of that decision. I am very lucky to have had, and have, such a wonderful husband. Trina, I was at a loss for words. It wasn't much of a coincidence that Susan was telling me this story right now. Thankfully, my phone stopped ringing. We had already finished eating, and neither of us wanted dessert or coffee. My in-laws wished me luck with my promotion and went to pay the bill and leave. As Susan took a few steps away, Sid turned around and walked over to the table. He reached out and took the rose I wore in my hair by the flower part. It disappeared into his work-weary hand. He slowly crushed the flower, and the look on his face was one that made me pee my pants. Sid turned and walked away. Susan paid, and as Sid went to catch up with her, he passed Roger, who was sitting alone at a table. Sid stopped and looked at Roger, and then slowly unclenched his fist. The broken rose slipped out of his fingers and onto the floor. I almost peed my pants again when Sid's foot quickly swung up and down, flattening the rose against the floor. I think Roger might have peed his pants too. Sid and Susan walked away. In a panic, I grabbed my purse to hide my wet pants and rushed into the bathroom. I quickly locked myself in a stall and tried to clean myself up. After about 10, 15 minutes, my breathing returned to normal. I pulled my pants up to the hand dryer when I realized that my in-laws were probably in the parking lot, waiting to see if I would leave alone. I quickly put my pants on and walked out of the bathroom. The table where Roger was sitting was empty. I nervously walked out the door, but I didn't see any relatives or Roger. I got in my car and drove away as fast as I could. That evening, I texted my husband when I arrived at the conference. Got there safely. Miss you. Chance quickly replied, hope you had a good trip, not too eventful. Good luck with your promotion. Thanks. Love you.
love you too. Maybe his parents hadn't arrived yet. My head was spinning, but I forced myself to go to the meet and greet. As soon as it was practical, I got out and went to my room. I texted Chance again, meeting boring. How are you and the kids doing? Again, Chance quickly replied, good. And guess what? My parents stopped by for a surprise visit. What? They didn't tell Chance about our dinner together. They covered for me. I'm sure he had no doubt what I was up to. No, they're giving me more rope to hang myself with. There was only one thing I could do. Honey, I'm switching to my laptop. I want to see your smiling face. I quickly undressed and put on the black lace lingerie I had bought. Susan, Chance was very excited about our arrival. Sid tried not to be grouchy, but I couldn't blame him. My son's happy life was at stake. After playing with the kids and putting them to bed, we were chatting in the living room when a text came in on Chance's phone, which I realized was from Trina. Chance smiled when he received it. My boy sure did love that girl, and even a few hours ago, I thought she was the best thing that had happened to him, even better than me. The correspondence didn't last long, and his laptop glowed. It was on the coffee table sideways, so I could see the image as it came up. It was Trina in something black and lacy. Chance quickly picked up the laptop and lowered the screen. He then said goodnight to us and took the laptop into his bedroom. I looked at Sid, who was sitting next to me. I knew he was keeping his eyes on his sister-in-law, but I also knew that wasn't why he was smiling. He was smiling because his son's happy life would not be shattered like that rose in the restaurant. Then he said, we don't want you to get pregnant, so why don't we try other places for my stuff? He then took me to the guest room. Epilogue, nine months later, Trina gave birth to Chance Sidney Walsh. When Trina returned from the conference, there were several crazy days of amazing sex. Chance was putting stuff in places he'd never been before, but some of the stuff Chance had to go where Trina could get pregnant. It was pretty obvious to Trina what the baby should be named. Her relatives arrived at the hospital with a large bouquet of flowers. Baby Chance was in the hospital nursery, and Chance Sr. was going to take mom and dad to see him. My father-in-law Sid was the last one out and then quickly turned around and came back in, holding out a card to me. When Trina pulled it out of the envelope, crushed rose petals sprinkled from it, and it was empty inside, but Sid had written, one chance is all you get. Luckily, Trina was wearing the diapers they put on after giving birth because she peed herself.